All right, so review. This uh, chapter started way back on squares and square roots. So remember, if I square anything, the biggest thing that I have to be careful of is if I square a negative number into my calculator, make sure you know that if you have to use parentheses or not in your calculator, or if the calculator just does the negative on its own. Um, square roots. Remember, can I take the square root of any number? Yes. We go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which ones can't I? There's negative square roots. So like in number uh, 13, right? Number 13, I cannot do. All right? Um, the other ones now, when I take the square root of anything, I honestly should always have two answers. One positive and one negative, right? On the problems like 9 and 10, you don't necessarily have to write that plus or minus. Okay? Unless you're actually solving a problem. But something on 11 or 12, when they put the uh, sign in front of the radical, then you got to make sure that you have that specific sign in your answer. So in number 11, I'm looking for the negative version of the answer. In number 12, I'm looking for positive and negative. Make sense? So can I take the square root of any positive number? Yes. 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 A lot of times I if I do that, I'm gonna get a decimal answer. If I don't get a decimal answer, what did we call those kind of numbers? A perfect square. A perfect square. So that's basically taking the square root and of our basically our counting numbers and then squaring our counting numbers. So remember you should Kind of recognize 1 through 15 as squares. Okay? Any questions with that section? Turn to page. So basically, uh, we throw out uh, section 9-2. Um, just the real numbers thing is, is kind of an afterthought. Uh, so the next part was about angles and uh, measuring them or drawing them. Everybody okay with using a protractor? No. Any problems with that? No. So if I'm using a protractor, and uh, what kind, of, what three kind of angles can I have? Right, straight, acute. Right, straight, acute. Okay, if you're going to say straight, then we'd have four, oh. and we'd have obtuse. Perfect. So how do I know that it's an acute angle? Less than 90 if it's uh, obtuse, it's more than 90, and if it's a right angle, it's 90. And how do I definitely know that it's a right angle? The box. The box, right? So again, just because it looks like a right angle, if they do not put a box on there, it is not a right angle. So then it could be like 89 or 91 degrees, right? So again, we look at this right here, is this a right angle? No, it's not a right angle until we put that box in. So just keep that in mind. So we're good with measuring them and drawing them? Yeah. Everybody? Yeah. Which leads us then to talking about a triangle. Okay? So every single triangle has two what kind of angles? Less than 90 degrees. Acute. So acute, right? Less than 90 degree angle. So we name the triangle by that third angle, all right? Um, what are the, so the ways of naming that triangle are either an acute triangle, uh, obtuse triangle, or a right triangle. And again, that's if I'm describing it using my angles. What are the words if I describe them using the sides? Okay, so scaling means what? No sides are equal. Exactly right. Isosceles means two sides are equal. And how do we show that? The little hash marks, right? The little slashes. So again, if we drew this right here and made our triangle, we could actually draw a box and have the two slashes. So this would actually be a right isosceles triangle. Okay, so that's really important with the slashes. And then if I have all three of them, all three of my sides, we call it a what? Equilateral. So all three. So remember now, 
From here then we started talking about the relationship with the angles and the sides opposite of them, right? They kind of correspond or go together a little bit. So what that means is if I have two sides that are the same, the angles opposite of them should also be what? They should be the same. So realistically, we could put two little uh, arcs in those corners, and I would know that each one of those arcs is how many degrees in this particular case? Yeah, but more I can be more specific even than that in this case. If this is 90 degrees, these have to be, yeah, less than 90, but if they're the same, what would they have to be? 45 degrees. 45 and 45. So again, remember, if I have a triangle that has one really small side and one really big side, okay? And then remember, the sides opposite of them would have those same characteristics, okay? So in this particular case right here, we're talking about that, right? And if we would call this A, B, and C, right? We still know that the side opposite of C in this particular case, because it's a right angle, would be my what? My hypotenuse. My hypotenuse. What's the net, what's the shortest side in this case? Okay, AC, but it's not an angle then. So we would just call it AC the side. Now, the other thing that you got to remember is don't forget that this side opposite of capital A is little a, and so on and so forth, right? So again. Angles are always represented by capital letters. Sides are either represented by lowercase letters that correspond to those angles, or you could use the two uh, capital letters. Going back to angles, what were the three ways that I could name an angle? Uh, a letter. A letter. Or all, all, all the letters. All the. All the angles together, but then we'd have to use what or which one would have to be in the middle? The vertex. The vertex. Exactly right. Okay, so you're exactly right. When can I use one compared to three letters? Remember, it's like something like this. Okay, if I have um, A, B, C, and D, right? I cannot just say that that's angle E because there's a lot of angle E's there, right? There's actually, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six angle E's realistically, okay? So that's when we'd have to use the three letters, but we would always have to have E as the middle letter, okay? Um, when we're talking about the angles in a triangle, all three of the angles are always going to add up to what? 180 degrees, okay? So, any questions with 22 through 24? All right, I want you to close your book right now. Find a little piece of scratch paper. On your piece of scratch paper, there's three important formulas that you need for this chapter. Okay, this is really important because some of you really, really struggled with this on the quiz. So I want you to write the Pythagorean theorem, the distance formula, and the midpoint formula. Okay? So when we do the distance and midpoint, remember, we're doing that for any two random points. So here's point one. And here's point two. But remember, we differentiated them by subscripts. This is the other thing that some of you struggled on. If it's a subscript, the little number better be below the variable, not up where it looks like an exponent. Okay, so that grand theorem, you're not really going to use this. Distance formula and midpoint, you'll use those two points. So think for a little bit. Should have 
three formulas. The diagrams here. This just needs to be. You played that that ball. I did. Oh, what's that ball? Yeah. So it's like a ball of big mass. Oh, yes, yeah, so I can jump. Fuck that. Yeah, that's right. Outside. Yeah, box every time. Alright, are we good? Well, who was mine? I did. Concentrate. Concentrate. So, let's go back to when would I use the Pythagorean theorem? With a what? With a what? With a what? A what? A right triangle. I can only use the Pythagorean theorem with a right triangle. Okay, so again, if we kind of, we should have just used that triangle over there, but if I draw a triangle like this and put my right triangle, I have capital A up here, capital B down here, and capital C here. What is my Pythagorean theorem? Exactly right, but oh. here's the big one. Some of you still didn't do this the other day. Remember, it's all sides, so they all need to be lowercase letters, right? Because we're not talking about these angles when we use this, we're talking about the sides that go with those angles. So again, little a's down here, little b's down here, and little c's over here. And what did you say about the little c? It's always the what? Longest side, which we call what? The hypotenuse, right? So the hypotenuse is always across or diagonal from my 90 degree angle or the box. And so we know that little a and little b have to be smaller than that little c. Okay, so you can open your books back up. Do you need to see uh, a kind that uses Pythagorean theorem? Okay. So, open your book because I want you to tell me, do you want to see 25 or 26? 485 now. So, obviously, um, you're going to do kind of the same thing, but 25, 26, and 27 are all different just because they use or ask you to find a different letter every single time. Now, if they ask you to find A or B, you're basically doing the exact same thing. But if I'm finding C, then it's a little different. So, which one do you want to do? Um, 26. 26. So, A, they said, was what? We don't know. So we're going to write A squared. Plus, B was? B was 2. two. C was 7. And we're squaring that, and then 7 and squaring that. Okay? So again, the first thing, just put the numbers in. This is the other thing that you are never going to get penalized for writing things down. Some of you, I think, want to squeeze everything in this little section of your paper because you think if you go outside those lines, you're going to get it counted wrong. Absolutely not. Okay? I would much rather see more work than less work. All right? So, the next thing I do, I'm thinking about the order of operations. So, I'm going to square the numbers. Well, I still don't know what A squared is. What's 2 squared? What's 7 squared? Okay, so now basically I'm asking myself, how do I solve for that a squared? So I'm going to cover that up and I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. When I do that, my 4s cancel out. I'm left with a squared is equal to what? 45. Now, if I have something squared, how do I unsquare it? I take the square root, right? So if I take the square root of one side, I got to take the square root of the other side. My square root should cancel out the squared. So a equals do I know the square root of 45? No. Probably not right off the top of my head. So I got to punch it in my calculator and I get what? And then read the directions and what does it say? Round to the nearest tenth. So what's that? Just one spot, right? And realistically, we should use the little squiggly equal sign because that means we rounded or we're approximating. Okay? Now, if they give me both of these instead of C, then I'm just going to square them, add them together, and then take my square root. Okay? Okay with that? All right. So the next one was the distance formula. What do we got? 
D equals what? X. What? X one minus Nope. Nope. X one minus X two squared. Squared. Okay. Plus. Perfect. And squared. It's all square root. And it's all square root. Okay. So again, they would give us two points. And I'm going to stick them in there. Now, does it really matter where my x of 1 and x of 2 really go in this one? No, because why? Mm -hmm. Not the subtracting so much as the what? The, the squared part, right? Because I'm going to square it, I don't really care what the answer is. If it's negative, I'm going to make it positive. If it's positive, I'm going to make it positive. Okay, so. Um, any of those on 28 through 30? You want to see one of those using that formula? Everybody good? Okay, so what did you come up with for your midpoint formula? No. X1 plus X2 divided by 2. Y1 plus Y2 divided by 2 and it's a point, so it's going to be 0 relative. Right. So, the only reason I'm going to say no to Trevor's, well, there's two things. One, you said something about squares. No squares in this one. Okay, so don't square anything. And then the other thing is I'm always going to do the X's first because it's a point. It's an ordered pair. Okay? But don't square anything. And the other thing that I noticed uh, on the quiz, and I'm pretty sure it was you guys, there's no plus sign here either. Some of you try to put a plus sign in between those two things. It's an ordered pair. So it's a point. Okay, remember, we're trying to find the midpoint and the distance between these points. And remember, when we're talking about doing this, we're talking about doing points that are not um, straight up and down or straight across from each other. They're at a diagonal. So that's a big deal. So do we need to do one of these midpoint ones? Anybody? 31 through 33. We good? All right. So the next section is about similar triangles. So similar means what? They're alike. How? Same shape but different sizes. Same shape but different sizes, right? So. We know that if the two triangles are similar, what's true about the angles in the two triangles? Well, what does that mean? You're saying the same thing over and over again. If the angles in similar triangles are similar, what does that mean about the angles? They're the exact same measurements. Okay, what's true about the sides of those triangles? Yeah, they got to be different because they're different sizes, but there's some characteristic about the sides. So what are what's special about the sides? So look at, um, let's look at number 34. So they have this, and tell me the letters. M. And the little guy. Mm -hmm. U up here? Yeah. T down here? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we would write a similarity statement, right? A similarity statement just basically tells everybody what order it's in. So we would say triangle M. What do you want to name this one? N L. That's fine. It's similar. Remember, that's my symbol, the little square. Swig squiggly thing, triangle. What, what do we have to say now? Because the order matters, right? So when we say that now, this is telling us that those angles are similar or congruent to each other. So angle M and angle U should have the same degree measure. Angle L and angle T should have the same degree measure. Now, what's true about the sides? 
Okay, but there's still got to be some kind of relationship. Okay, but that's not my sides necessarily. So how, what is important about the sides of similar whatever? Well, but L and T aren't sides, right? They're what? They're proportional, or they make a ratio, right? So remember, this side right here is MN, right? The only reason I just said that yours weren't sides, Mike, because you didn't use two letters, right? One letter is just for angles. So as Landon said, MN is to, remember, we're going to make a ratio, a fraction, to what? UV, and then we're going to set that equal to, what's another group? LN, or, okay, LN is to? TV. And what has to be true about this? They have to stay in the same order. So we did the big triangle or the little triangle. You have to do the big triangle or the little triangle all the time. And then what would be my last group? ML is to? UT. And we can use these fractions right here to solve problems like in 34, right? We're just going to put them in the right spots and we're setting up and making a proportion. So then we're going to multiply diagonally and then divide by that third number. Everybody good with that? So similar triangles have congruent angles at the same spot, but they have proportional sides. What is this called right here? What is that as a whole thing called? There's, this is the similarity what? Similarity statement. The similarity statement will allow you to talk about the congruent angles and the proportional sides. But if they say to write a similarity statement in the directions, this is what we're writing right here, right? To match up the letters, okay? Last but not least, on that same piece of paper, write down the word Sokotoa. Whenever you get your uh, formula. Write down the word Sokotoa. Make sure you spell it right. So what do we got? Perfect. And again, this helps me with doing my trigonometric ratios, right? My three trigonometric ratios are? Cosine and tangent. And then the little letters tell me what? The sides that I have to use to make them. Okay, now remember, Hypotenuse is always hypotenuse. If it's hypotenuse, it cannot be what? Adjacent. Adjacent. So it might be next to it, but if it's hypotenuse, it's got to be hypotenuse. Don't forget to read the directions about what to round to. So in the first part, like what we did today in the bell ringer, don't forget to write them as a fraction and as a decimal. How do I get that decimal? I just take those numbers in my fraction and punch them into my calculator. Do not use the sine, co sine and tangent buttons. When do I get to use sine, cosine, and tangent buttons? When they give you a degree or ask you to use the angle, right? Exactly right. And I'm just punching it in. And again, read the directions about what to round to. So if we're rounding to four places, we're looking at the fifth decimal to see if we round up or down. Questions? Everybody good with that? So again, we'll do the quit or the test tomorrow, and then we'll do a really short quiz on Wednesday. I know that's kind of backwards, but just time-wise, it'll work out better.